very warm welcome to the Trading Bell Show. What a year it has been, and that's what we wanted to focus on to look at how the year has behaved, especially in regards to the markets. And joining us to help us more to understand this is Kevin Gigi, who is the head of equities at Genghis Capital, right here on my right. And my far right is Samuel Gishohi, NCBA Investment Bank. He's the head of business right there. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. And I want to start by saying, you know, this year has been what has been by many terms unprecedented because of uh, you know the nature of how it is from the pandemic we are seeing and from the uh, many things that we're seeing political temperatures rising but i want to ask you maybe generally this year what has been your observation from where you sit and maybe i'll start with you kevin in brief what do we say uh it's been uh it's been a tough year it's been a near in turmoil we've seen uh quite some things that have really affected uh, uh, capital that flows into our markets. Yeah. So one, of course, there's the pandemic, which was uh, carried on from last year. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, we've seen all these geopolitical instabilities. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen almost all our neighbors in an issue or two. Yeah. We've seen Uganda, uh, you know, invade DRC. We've seen the Tigrayans and Ethiopians. We've yeah. seen the Somalis uh, protest after the election results, you mm -hmm. know. We've seen a coup in Sudan. Yeah. So you name a country, you know, early in the year we saw, you know, Tanzania's president die. Yeah. So I think it's only Kenya that has been stable in the region, but wow. everything else around us has really played into affecting the capital inflow into our country. So okay. it's been a tough year mm -hmm. and hopefully the next one becomes better. Okay, and of course we'll be delving more, especially on your observation on the equities later mm. on. But Samuel, I know you also sit in a desk where you see a lot of things. Well, how has the year been on your end? Well, it's been quite interesting. Yeah. Um, 2020, mm -hmm. um, unexpectedly, yeah. uh, we saw quite a lot of um, inflows, especially from the retail end, which I deal with mostly, um, because a lot of working capital became idle. Yeah. So against our expectation of you know, a lot of sell-offs, to support yeah. business, it and was by the, the way, opposite. I hope you mean 2021. Because no, 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 2020. 2020. I'm oh, coming okay. to 2021. Okay, fine. So, um, and that was when the market was at its lowest of low. Yeah. So, 2021, mm -hmm. we saw quite a bit of a recovery, especially on the large caps. Okay. But if you look at the NS and uh, the all, all share index, yeah. it actually increased more than the NSC index, which means across the board, yeah. there was a recovery. Okay. Um, however, the large caps. Um, came back very strong, particularly mm -hmm. the banks and telecom. Yeah. And uh, around October 2021, that's mm -hmm. where they peaked. Yeah. So, in as much as we are currently in a bit of a of, of, of a stagnation and a bit of a dip yeah. because of a lot of profit taking, yeah. Um, a lot of people did did laugh all the way to the bank because wow. they took you know the brief step of buying yeah. into the market. Mm -hmm. So, 2021 was a recovery year. Yeah. Um, of course, we're going to an election year, so then there's a bit of, you know, a worry about that. But generally, um, 2021 has been a surprise, okay. for, for, for lack of a better word. Yes. Maybe we could also attribute this to, you know, the advancements we have seen, like the vaccination processes that have come across and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the opening of the economy, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. um, as, as the, you know, the COVID-related you know, lockdowns and curfews and all that stuff yeah. started to ease off, then businesses have started to pick up. Mm -hmm. But even in as much as businesses, because the economy didn't really pick up, mm -hmm. um, the stock market itself yeah. remained the, a, a sort of haven. Yeah. Um, now we are seeing a bit of flight of capital back into um, into fixed income, which is bonds, the bonds side of things, yeah. uh, primarily because the stock market has sort of hit mm -hmm. a bit of a peak yeah. and has dipped a little bit and so people are putting a bit of money in the safe side especially with um with the shorter end of the yield curve going up interest rates are going up okay. the government is quite hungry so there's good yields there which the investors are sort of taking advantage of great before we just focused how we expect to see the year i mean next year to be you know kevin i've seen looking through especially this year from q1s all the way down banks were smiling because i was seeing a lot of good reports coming out and, and i think it's alluded to what i mean uh, we're just hearing about the recovery i don't know what's your comment especially on the banking sector because it looks like it's the one that was really smiling i didn't see any bank saying we just hit some losses <laughs> yeah i mean uh you know the base was really low where mm -hmm. the banks were coming from and that is 2020 especially if you look at the full year yeah? it yeah. was a full year under the pandemic mm -hmm. so 
Having set the bar so low and uh, the country becoming more reopened uh, in 2021, yeah. I think it got to people where uh, guys knew, okay, this thing is not coming and going, it's coming to be with us. Mm -hmm. And so guys, uh, some folks started taking um, uh, preventative measures seriously. Mm -hmm. We started getting some vaccines into the country. We started yeah. training more people to be uh, more equipped to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So generally there was that sense of uh, relaxation and guys just got back to their uh, okay. usual businesses. Mm -hmm. And now once business is peaked, uh, personal uh, loan consumption is peaked, mm -hmm. of course it was all smiles for the banks. Okay. So yeah, we've just from seeing, you know, if you look at all the results, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, and now we're going all into full years, uh, you'll notice that the banks have really reported um, improved loan book. Yeah. Some are converting their government securities now into available cash to loan out to the public. Yeah. And uh, as much you expect, you know, personal businesses, mm -hmm. uh, consumption, especially going into a festive period. Yeah. Uh, we, we expect consumption, you know, next year, early mm -hmm. next year, again, kids are back to school. Mm -hmm. So all this is manufacturing and consumption, and that's all. Uh, all that is fueled by capital that yeah. is provided by these uh, banks. Ishwahi, I want to throw you as well in the bus there about the banking industry. What does this mean now for investors, you know, people who are eyeing to, you know, buy a stock or two? What would you tell them based on that? Um, valuations are low. Yeah. Um, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and the recovery is not yet fully around. I mean, if you look at the likes of uh, KCB, which were around 55 before the pandemic, mm -hmm. went down to 32 or 33 there and have come back to <coughs> the late 40s, yeah. 47, 48. Mm -hmm. um, we still have quite a bit of, of way to go. Yeah. Valuations are low. The mm -hmm. performance is very good. Mm -hmm. We are coming from a dividend drought. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at equity didn't pay dividends, Barclays didn't pay dividends. Yeah. So there's quite a few, INM I think didn't pay. So there's quite a few banks who didn't pay dividends during the pandemic period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my feeling mm -hmm. or our feeling is that going into now 2022, mm -hmm. we are going to see them come and use dividends as a signal Okay. It's called a signaling factor mm -hmm. to say we are back, like okay. things are good now because they are doing very well. Okay. So given that, I would expect that any investor is looking and seeing that the yields on stocks, mm -hmm. if the share prices, which is now the capital gains, mm -hmm. start to pick up in 2022, yeah. and um, of course the dividend yields are good, mm -hmm. we are assuming 8 9%. Yeah probably even higher if they're going to be trying to make an impact on what they didn't do in 20, mm -hmm. 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. it would mean a very good year for investors okay. to be buying now. All right. Now, the other thing I would say, mm -hmm. um, going back historically, <coughs> and it doesn't mean that this will be the case this election year, yeah. but every election cycle, mm -hmm. for the last four election cycles, mm -hmm. the market has rallied by more than 20%. Oh. Go and look at the graphs, the wow. NSE 20, that, you'll see. That's interesting. So if mm -hmm. that has been the case, and mm -hmm. that's because during election years, mm -hmm. investors are not looking to put too much in their businesses yeah. because there's a bit of... And so s the tendency is for this money to go into the stock market. Mm -hmm. My worry is that uh, because COVID hit mm -hmm. two years to the election, yeah. that may have already happened. So yeah. it may not necessarily happen, mm -hmm. but it's a possibility that we could also see a rally next year. Okay. Interesting, you've already jumped into how we're looking at the forecast. Kevin, I want to bring you as well in. What, what's your, what's your, from where you sit, what's on your crystal ball? What do you see 2022 being like? <sighs> I think... Uh, <laughs> that, that looks nice. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Go on. It's, um, I mean, every, no analyst can uh, comfortably predict uh, yeah. what an election year could bring. Mm -hmm. I think it will be more of a surprise to us than the how we were caught flat-footed with the COVID pandemic, yeah? yeah. So every election is different, um, and they all have their own uh, dynamics. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, first and foremost, and it's my prayer also, that it will be a peaceful election, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, the candidates are pretty clear. Yeah. And it's, uh, my only worry is that it seemingly, uh, as the time goes by, it seems to be a two-horse race. Mm -hmm. And that's when we have now issues, of course, winner takes all and uh, loser won't accept defeat. Yeah. So there are those concerns, and I think if you talk to every analyst, they'll tell you they're pretty concerned about that fact. Okay. Uh, but my prayer is that we've also learned from the previous elections. Mm -hmm. In terms of um, uh, foreign, direct, foreign direct investments, it's... Yeah. Uh, uh, Foreigners tend to keep off from the market during mm -hmm. that period. Yeah. And as such, we might see um, 
sort of like a temporary freeze on the uh, stock exchange yeah mm -hmm. we are in a market where north of 85 percent we are driven by foreigners mm -hmm. you know it's, our market is not like pakistan where 92 percent are local so we cannot support our market by ourselves mm -hmm. so once these foreigners uh, uh look out yeah. and you know to get his point is we have seen quite some uh, inflows into the stock market mm -hmm. and that's also primarily because our region our regional uh, neighbors are pretty unstable yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. if anyone is looking to invest in an african fund mm -hmm. uh, those african funds and they're looking to invest in east africa they'll mm -hmm. predominantly look at kenya yeah. because we are heading the region yes and we are not faring too bad when you're looking at uh, the continent as well we are yeah. a top four economy yeah i was just looking at the african stock exchange uh, association ASEA. Mm -hmm. you know and you'll realize Nairobi uh, stock exchange is almost in top three on all all statistics you know uh, in terms Quite of impressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. equity turnover, mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. of trades, mm -hmm. all those metrics. So, you know, you'll find your Cairo stock mm -hmm. exchange over there. Mm -hmm. And these are 26, 27 stock exchanges. Wow. You know, there are 28 yeah. stock exchanges in Africa. Yeah. So these are 27, which means it's ex South Africa. Okay. Yeah. So we are pre we are doing very, fairly, very well. Okay. You know. Yeah. So the next, uh, the next year will, uh, for me, I think we've learned from the past, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, guys seem to be well positioned now. Mm -hmm. You know, guys have understood that we need uh, to invest more than we consume. Okay. Especially so that you don't get uh, uh, flat footed. As mm -hmm. Gisho mentioned, the uh, valuations are pretty impressive. You know, you're looking at KCB at 43, you're looking at e uh, equity at 47, you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about Safaricom at 37, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. These are stocks you'd seem rally to 43 levels, yeah. Mm -hmm. And with the, the benefits or the uh, dividends of South Africa expanding regionally, mm -hmm. We've not yet seen that here, of okay. course, unfortunately, because they went uh, and expanded into, you know, we're talking about 50 billion Kenya shillings for a license fee, mm -hmm. expanded into Ethiopia, yeah. then Tigray happened. Okay. So we've not really seen those dividends come to play. And I think once, um, and our president is playing a key role in uh, uh, advocating for peace on that horn of Africa, mm -hmm. I think once that uh, settles down, we're mm -hmm. going to see quite some dividends in the blue chip and more so on Safaricom. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which, we'll be talking about how the blue chips are behaving, especially in the moving direction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Gishohe, I want to end this part, but I want to ask you quickly, I have seen a lot of interesting things happening through the exchange this year, and I think we'll delve more on that from the day trading. I've seen even the bonds market getting a bit excited, corporate bonds as well being released, and we've seen two successful ones. I'd like you to comment on that, but right after this break. So welcome back. You're watching The Trading Bell and I'm here with Kevin Gigi and Gijohi himself all the way, just helping us to understand the year, how it has been and what are we seeing as we cross over. We are talking about the interest we have seen on the corporate bond sector, talking about what we saw with Family Bank and EABL. Gijohi, I don't know what's your comment on this. Is this a new rise that we're seeing with interest uh, from investors? Well, I, th I think investors looked more at the quality of the companies that were issuing the corporate okay. bonds. Mm -hmm. We've seen a corporate bond drought for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and of course, before that, we saw quite a few corporate bonds that um, went bad. Yeah. Um, I think there was, uh, there was Chase. Chase Bank and there yeah. was um, Imperial Bank. Mm -hmm. And so investors had become very, very yeah. a averse mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. those. And so I'm glad that we did see oversubscription and a very good uh, response of investors to those two corporate, corporate yeah. bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, means there is an appetite now. Mm -hmm. And of course, if they're well structured, yeah. it could be a good thing for that market. Okay. Of course, there's still that worry. Corporate bonds are very illiquid on the secondary market. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that this new surge will also help to see more activity on that end. And it's Great. also a yeah. way to, I, I think just for me, it's also a way to diversify. Because if you look mm -hmm. at uh, investment funds, mm -hmm. uh, they're predominantly in two things. So they're in the stock exchange, or, or by that I mean equities, or yeah. then government, government securities, yeah, yeah, government debt. Mm -hmm. So uh, traditionally we had seen a couple of good bonds, especially from EABL, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they went for a time where they sought other uh, uh, funding channels, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we, so quite some uh, some drought. Then I think the last few corporate bonds that again we had, as Gisha mentioned, we had Chase and Imperial and a few others went bust. Yeah. So 
guys who are really, because the level of trust mm -hmm. that you bestow to corporate bonds is not the same you give to government debt. Yeah. Government debt is backed by the sovereign, you know. Mm -hmm. Corporate bonds, you can only go for so far before you're <laughs> wiped, yeah? Yeah. So with the back of uh, companies, again, such as EABL in the last few years and now, you know, Family Bank and a few others, I think there's just that investor optimism and hope okay. and also a way to diversify from the two classifications of uh, investments. So we are likely to see some more next year? We, we, could, see, we yeah. could see some <laughs> more and it's a cheaper way for them to also finance. You know, okay. if you're going to a bank at 13.5% yeah. and you can get it from the market at 11%, I mean, it's cheaper for the Better companies. Off yeah. 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 Mm. All right. So I, I just want to start with you, Kevin, to comment about this day trading. We saw the launch of day trading right here. Mm -hmm. Apparently from... Um, PSA, it's a game changer in itself. I don't know what has been the observation. Game trading was poised to be a game changer. To me, it, it it's, it hasn't it's really come close. Not you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's all the you know the excitement and hula baloo about a new investment, but it doesn't really take off uh, from where we're seated. Yeah. So we earlier on saw derivatives. Yeah. If you look at the turnover derivatives, I mean, it's ludicrous. It's, mm -hmm. it's a joke. It's yeah. neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. Derivatives market is one of the biggest markets in the world. Absolutely. I think the biggest market in the world. And how are we doing we, here? Mm -hmm. we, we're not doing quite well. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about 200,000 turnover a okay. day. When mm -hmm. you go to the market, we're talking about trillions of dollars yeah. in turnover a day. Because mm -hmm. every, almost everything can fit into a derivative and yeah. that's can mm -hmm. become a commodity. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so it's a very big market out there. It's a really unexplored market in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Partly or in part, it's because, you know, we have very countable securities, mm -hmm. you know, the single stock features yeah. and index features. Mm -hmm. And that's just about it. You know, we okay. have a gold trading on the main board. Mm -hmm. We don't have a derivative for that. <laughs> Let me bring in Gisho here on that because yeah. mm -hmm. what should be the call to action? Because, you know, the instruments are there. Why are people not really excited about taking these things up? One, the biggest issue is the level of sophistication. Okay. Um, we are coming from a market where a majority of investors are dividend-related investors. Yeah. Uh, very few uh, investors are actually sitting in what we call uh, pooled funds. Mm -hmm. Most investments are individual um, um, retail yeah. uh, CDSC accounts. Yeah. I mean, we have about a million CDSC accounts mm -hmm. in comparison to South Africa where there are very few, much less in the number of CDSC accounts mm -hmm. because they have a lot more in terms of pooling of funds, mm -hmm. which now means that uh, the fund can diversify into different, uh, you know, the different um, securities mm -hmm. and with uh, some underlying knowledge of the market because it means it's being managed by somebody who understands the market. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of investor education about these things is important. Kenyans don't pick something new like today and tomorrow <laughs> they're running for it. Yeah. Um, they're usually very, very cautious uh, with any new investments. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have a very, uh, we have seen so many scams in Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> and Kenyan investors always feel that anything new yeah. until, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. So it's not very easy. Mm -hmm. We've been talking to our retail investors, but you will always find that feeling of, okay, let's wait and see. Let's get into the week-to-week -week look at how the markets performed over this week. And uh, Gishay, I want to start with you. I'm looking at the top gain as I'm seeing uh, interesting names here. I'm seeing Sassini, Nairobi Business Ventures, Umeme, BK Group, Jubilee Holdings. These are not the usual top movers that we would expect, but what, what's happening in these top gainers? Uh, it's usually a sign of stagnation. Stagnation. Um, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the big boys are not really moving up or down, it yeah. means that the market has stagnated. So yeah. they're not being the top gainers or gain top losers. Mm -hmm. And so investors start to look at this. You know, you start seeing the investors who are trading in the smaller, mm -hmm. you know, smaller, probably less, Counters, yes. less volume, lower mm -hmm. volume stocks mm -hmm. yeah. starting to take, um, a pr uh, take a front seat. Yeah. And that's usually what would happen between November, December and January. Okay. Because, of course, now funds are looking 
it's holiday time. Everybody yes. is <laughs> doing something else with their money. Okay. Yeah. So top losers, Kevin. I'm seeing also very similar ways. I'm seeing Samia, Standard Group, Car and General, CIS Insurance. Your comment on this? I, I think for each and every single name that we've mentioned, there reported losses mm -hmm. or at least a decline in profits, yeah. and a good number of them reported uh, numbers in the red. Yeah. So it's been a tough year, especially for media, for insurance, yeah. uh, with all the claims that have been coming. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. media with all their, uh, you know, operating expenditure mm -hmm. having shut up, yeah. and no, and you know. Traditional media relied on, you know, print media. Mm -hmm. The new consumer is consuming digitally. Mm -hmm. So I think that has been a big uh, hit on uh, media companies like the Standard. Yeah. So, but again, as Gishohi mentioned, you'll notice that some of these new names that you see on either the movers or gainers mm -hmm. will be there on significantly low volume. Okay. You know, a thousand shares, two hundred shares, but right. they're only because uh, they're pretty quiet counters to mm -hmm. trade. Mm -hmm. And so once they trade a shilling less than the previous closing price you find they are 9.8% and you think the company has gone bust, <laughs> not really. Okay. Yeah. Gishu, he's the one who's very optimistic today. So the indexes look like they're doing well. I can see the old share index is up by 3.54%, even NSE 20 share index as well, 2.22%, 25 share index as well, 3.83% up. What's happening as well in the indices? Well, um, 3 point something percent is really nothing significant. <laughs> but when I go back, we yes. hit our peak around September, October. Yeah. And we've seen quite a bit of a downturn on the indices, okay. which tells me that um, now, the, because that was a lot of profit taking. Mm -hmm. So now market is back where we would be telling people it's a good time to take bargains. Yeah. If you have some you know, idle money or, okay, we call it disposable income. Yes. Let's not call it idle money. Yeah. If you have some disposable income, yeah. this is a good time to pick up the bargains mm -hmm. because now come February, March, <coughs> yeah. if banks announce the kind of results we saw in Q quarter three mm -hmm. in February, March, mm -hmm. and the sort of dividends we think would be a signal, I think would be for signaling, mm -hmm. especially because it's an election year. Remember, yeah. Kenya is a very dividend-oriented, um, the Kenyan investor is a very dividend-oriented investor. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of them ask, calling me and saying, how come I didn't receive my dividends? They mm -hmm. don't realize the dividends were not paid by several of the companies they hold. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if that happens and there's a lot of dividends mm -hmm. um, or good dividend payouts, mm -hmm. then it would mean it would push a rally, maybe okay. during the early part of the year, mm -hmm. um, maybe for Kevin's, to feed a bit of on Kevin's <laughs> pessimism, maybe towards the election we might see a bit of a slowdown, yeah. which we saw in 2013, two, two, I think 2007. Yeah. We did see towards the election itself the market sort of tended to slow, mm -hmm. but it did rally earlier on in the year. So okay. I would expect if we're going to get a good dividend year, mm -hmm. we might see a good move okay. between March and June. Okay. Yeah. Kevin, I'll close with you. I know you already have a comment on that, but I want you to also add and move and talk about the top movers. Of course, it's the usual suspects. We have this Maricom, KPLC. Interesting is there, Abs, uh, Kenjian and KCB as well. On top of that. Uh, it's it's uh, just what I wanted to add. You know, he added on to my pessimism. Yes, Ms. Mal, add on to his yeah. optimism. Uh -huh. And I think uh, <laughs> he says he saw a peak in uh, or sometime around September. September. Yeah. I think partly it's due to the companies that actually uh, declared a dividend. Mm -hmm. We've seen quite some book closures uh, falling around November, end of November, December. early December. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. I think we have two companies that are closing tomorrow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think one of it is uh, NSC itself, mm -hmm. uh, 0 0.5 uh, shilling interim dividend. Yeah, it's almost eight nine percent. So yeah. really good dividend. Mm -hmm. So I think the declarations of the few companies that actually declared a dividend yeah. also brought that. Uh, you know. Uh, that boost in the in the stock market and mm -hmm. there was an expectation that you know having come from a full year of the pandemic yeah. you know the blue chips you know your equity your kcb your abscess will actually declare a dividend yeah. well there's the optimism that yes they didn't declare for a whole full year and they're going to declare now uh sometime around i think it's march february mm -hmm. march, february, march. Yeah. they're going to declare but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not to uh to disapprove him. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for the but. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not to disapprove him, but I think coming now into an election here, here where the banks don't know, okay, do we give our money to go, do we buy government debt? Yeah. So do we invest in bonds? Mm -hmm. Or do we then pull off this money from government debt and let it, lend it to the Monanchi? Mm -hmm. So the banks will be at, you know, at a very difficult uh, place. Yeah. They've been between a wall and a really hard place, yeah? Wow. Where you don't know what to do with the capital. And then that's, 
for that reason, I think they will want to preserve as much capital as possible. Yeah. I'm not optimistic they're going to give a dividend. If I was a CEO or an executive of one of the local banks, I don't think I would give a dividend. You'd hold Having back. going a, yeah. just a few months into the elections, mm -hmm. I would withhold that money. Yeah. I better give a special uh, dividend yeah. uh, through an AGM after Middle. the elections. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you have it. Some uh, interesting perspectives there. I, I would want to end with this. You know, this is a Christmas season, as we have said. Uh, I would want you to give a tip here and there. And by the way, also answer this question for me. From your observation, were, did we see uh, greater interest in the markets from especially retailers this time around? Would you say there was a bit of an upscale or it was still stagnant? Uh, and what's your hope for next year? So those are so many things to say in one. But yes, your observation in terms of uh, uptake in the markets and in terms of the you know participation and you know your message for Christmas to the people. <laughs> Let me start with you, Gisha. Yeah, as I said earlier, yeah. um, because of all the idle capital, retail really, really <coughs> supported the market. As Kevin right. said, we can't completely support the market. Okay. But considering the level of foreign sell-offs we saw mm -hmm. when the COVID pandemic came, yeah. the expectation was the market would go much lower than it actually did. Yeah. And uh, at some point, um, even for us, it was doom. <laughs> yeah. But yes, the retail investor did step up yeah. and we saw a lot of... Um, I'm, and I'm thinking, if you look at things like the flower industries sort of went stop. Yeah. The, the hospitality industry mm -hmm. stopped. Mm -hmm. All so many things just stopped. Yeah. And suddenly we had a lot of people with idle capital mm -hmm. because this was the money they had cash they were using for you know working capital and all that and yeah. now they had it in cash mm -hmm. and so they needed someone to pack it and we did see quite a lot of that come to the stock market okay um obviously as the market opens up then we can expect to see them probably sell off some of what they're holding okay. and so that could actually go to what kevin is saying you could see a bit of a downturn yeah. but remember markets work on you know the sort of turnover okay. that is happening <laughs> um your Christmas message. That's it. My yeah. Christmas message. Uh, don't spend what you don't have. Okay. Yeah. Don't <laughs> don't take <laughs> credit. So just just spend wisely. Yeah. Spend what you have. Mm -hmm. Um. The 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 thing is, people will have only one week. Children mm -hmm. are going on holiday for one week. Yeah. So this is a year where you can save what you usually spend for Christmas. For Christmas. Yes. Pay school fees and at least start the year with some <laughs> extra money that you can invest. Kevin, how about you? <sighs> So I think in terms of retail participation or generally, uh, you know, you and I participating in the local market, I think we've seen quite uh, some uptick mm -hmm. if you compare it to previous years. In part, I'd like to thank that to automation. Yeah. I think we've seen quite some automation of processes, you know, uh, yeah. processes that could take a week, two weeks, you know, opening of CDS accounts nowadays are almost instantaneous. Lovely. It's like opening a bank account, yeah. Mm -hmm. You come to a company like us, Jengis, and mm -hmm. you know, you have a jacuzzi up where you, from the comfort of your seat, you can just sit and invest. That's so I think, as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. seamlessly. And you, you know, you can use your, your mobile money providers to send money and receive money to your account yeah. instantly. Mm -hmm. So I think that automation has been a big foot. Yeah. And let's get it clear we mm -hmm. can get so many things right but we don't have the luxative to get the stock exchange okay. wrong yeah yeah so we really have to push it i think we, we are headed in the right direction mm -hmm. and i see we'll try and throw us a bone here and there mm -hmm. might be sweet might be you know <laughs> just there like the day trading yeah but i think uh, together we are really taking strides yeah for christmas I think it's just just tell folks that we've survived this far yeah glad tidings and happy holidays Lovely, good way to end. At, at least very optimistic this time round <laughs> <laughs> in the house. That's uh, we had Samuel Gishohi, NCBA Investment Bank, head of business development, and Kevin Gigi, head of equities, Jengis Capital, right here, helping us understand how the market was and a look at how we're crossing over. I think generally there was uh, some good energy and you know some good advice as well for you. Uh, uh, for your Christmas. So from my end as well is to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you next year. Of course, be wise, spend wisely. It's only one week as Gishui has said it. And of course, enjoy your time. Bye-bye for now. Trading Bell.